Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back today with another set guide and review, and this time it is for the high-end hit-driven set 2022 Topps Museum Collection. But with the high price, is this a set that you should buy into? We've got all three of the big late rookies that everyone is looking for, but it might be a little too expensive. Let's find out how good it really is. Let's dive right in to the One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Topps Museum Collection set guide and review. So it's been a few weeks since we've had a true set drop for baseball, but we finally have 2022 Topps Museum Collection coming out next week. And in this set guide and review, what we're trying to do is find out how good Topps Museum Collection really is. And we do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set rating. What we'll cover off on in this review is a lot of different things. We're gonna start with the set highlights, kind of a real high level view of what the set has to offer. We'll cover off on the different buying formats that you can get it in. Go a little bit deeper, tell you what the key cards that we're gonna be chasing are, who the key rookies are. Cover off on all the different parallels, inserts, relics, and autos. And then I'm even going to tell you six teams that I would recommend targeting in breaks. And if you want to know how good all 30 teams are in breaks, I'm even going to give you a break team cheat sheet. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating where we find out how good 2022 Topps Museum collection really is. And then what we'll do is we'll show you all the rankings from the one cent sensational set scale to date to see how it stacks up against all the other releases that have been released so far in the baseball card collecting season. But before we begin, I've got one more thing. Be sure to throw over to first and hit that like button. It's one of the best ways you can support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can see all of these reviews when they release. And if you want to be the first to see them, you got to hit that bell notification so you get notified as soon as they go live. Finally, be sure to check out my Patreon channel. That is where you can get into all my breaks. That is where you can get monthly break credits. You can get monthly packs. You get Discord community access and so much more. You can join for as little as $2 a month. There is a link in the video description below and I invite you to check it out. So here we go, 2022 Topps Museum Collection. Here's the set highlights. First thing to know, it's a premium hit-driven set that promises one hit per pack. It is in its 11th year of production, started back in 2012 and hasn't stopped. It is only available in hobby stores and it has a 100 card base set checklist. The set features 19 different rookies, vets, and retired greats in the base set checklist, and there is a five color base set parallel rainbow. You are guaranteed to get one auto relic, one auto, one quad relic, and one relic per hobby box, so four total hits out of the four packs that you're gonna open. The museum framed autos and jumbo relic autos are considered case hits in the set, and there are eight autograph sets and nine different auto relic sets that are available in 2022. There are seven single and like double relic sets that are available and three quad relic sets also available for 2022. The canvas collection inserts return in 2022 and you're gonna get one of those per box. And really, the set hasn't changed that much over the last couple years. It's not offering a ton new from 2021 to 2022, but there are a few changes. There's one new auto set called Framed Hall of Fame Autos. There are two new auto relic sets called MLB Authenticated Base Autos, which have actual bases in them, and the Dual Auto Jumbo Lumber Bat Relic. There is also one new relic, which is the MLB authenticated base relics. Those are the unsigned versions of the base relics that you can get that have the actual bases. So what are the different buying formats that we can get museum collection in? Well, you can start with the hobby case and the prices on these have really gone up in the last couple days because of the checklist. 
The hobby case is going to give you 12 boxes per case, four packs per box, five cards per pack. So that's 240 total cards. I believe the price has actually gone up, but I have $4,300 as the current online price, which gets you a cost per card of $17.91. What you're guaranteed to get out of the case, 12 auto relics, 12 on-card autos, 12 quad relics, 12 relic cards, and 48 base parallels. And you're guaranteed to get the case hits. One museum collection framed auto and one jumbo relic auto. If you want to just get the hobby box, you can do that too. You're going to get four packs per box, five cards per pack. So 20 total cards at about 360 bucks for a current online price. Your cost per card is going to creep up to 18 bucks, And you're going to get that one auto relic, one on-card auto, one quad relic, one relic card, and four base parallels. So the key cards we're going to be chasing. Well, let's start with the rookies. We've got a lot of the new rookies that were called up earlier in the season or started but weren't showing up in top Series 1 or Series 2. We have Hunter Green, Bobby Witt Jr., Brandon Marsh, Shane Baz, Royce Lewis, Bryson Stott, Vidal Brujan, C.J. Abrams, Wander Franco, Alec Thomas. Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, and O'Neal Cruz. So a lot of the big rookies that people have been chasing since Series 2, they show up here, they do have base cards in the set, no short prints to talk about here, but a very, very good key rookie lineup for 2022 Topps Museum Collection. For our parallels, autos, relics, stuff like that, obviously the base parallels of the rookies going to hold value. We also have that canvas collection, but they have sketch cards and autos that are available in those, and those are going to be really sought after. We have the four-player primary pieces, quad relics, a very nice relic there. Then we have the jumbo lumber bat nameplate relics. I believe those are all one of ones where they actually have nameplates from the bats that the players have used. There's museum memorabilia. Those are all one of ones. We also have the MLB authenticated base relics and the auto versions of those. Those are the cards that have the actual bases that have been used in games. We have the museum framed auto patch books, so a book in there. And we have the museum framed auto patches. Again, those are one of ones. Then we have the momentous material dual jumbo patch autos. So another cool patch auto right there. And we have the dual auto jumbo lumber bat relics. And we also have dual and triple on-card autos available. And finally, the very sought-after museum-framed autos. So lots of high-end stuff that we can get out of museum collection this year. So the base set parallels. Here's the color rainbow. There's only five. There is copper, which is unnumbered. We have sapphire to 150. Amethyst numbered to 99. You can see what that looks like with the Manny Machado over there at the right. We've got Ruby to 50 and Emerald one of ones. And that's going to be it for the base parallels. So what are the inserts that we're going to be chasing? Well, there's not a lot. We have the Canvas Collection reprints. There's 50 cards in the set and you get one per box. And this year they have introduced a parallel, which is the Artist Proof numbered to 50. You can also get the Canvas Collection Originals. Not quite sure how many cards are going to be in that set, but they will be one of ones. Those are the actual original drawings. And then we have the Canvas Collection Original Shape Sketch, which not sure how many cards are going to be in that, but those are one of ones as well. And that covers off on the inserts. For our Relics. First, we'll be chasing the dual meaningful material relics. There's 28 cards in that set, each numbered to 50 or less. And you do get a parallel rainbow of copper, ruby, and emerald. There's the four player primary pieces, quad relics, 26 cards in that set with a parallel copper to 75, gold to 25, and emerald one of one. The jumbo lumber bat nameplate relics. You can see what that looks like with the Tatis card over on the right. 75 cards in that set, and they are all one of ones. There's the meaningful material relics first set. That has 100 cards in it. They're each numbered to 50 or less with a copper, gold, ruby, and emerald parallel rainbow. And then there's the meaningful materials relics number two set. Another 100 cards there, each number to 50 or less, with the same parallel rainbow as the first Meaningful material set. 
We also have the MLB Authenticated Base Relics, 10 cards in that set, each number to 10, with the parallel rainbow of Ruby 5 and Emerald 1 of 1. And we have more relics. We have the Momentous Materials Jumbo Patch Relics. There's 70 cards in that set, each number to 5, and of course, there's a parallel Emerald 1 of 1. We have the Museum Memorabilia Relics first set. That has got 97 cards in it, and they are all one of ones. Then the Museum Memorabilia Relics 2, that has 94 cards in the subset, and they're all numbered to one, uh, one of ones as well. Then we have the Single Player Primary Pieces Quad Relics, 98 cards in that set. You can see what it looks like with the Jeter card on the right. They're all going to be numbered to 99, and we have a parallel Copper, Gold, and Emerald Rainbow. Then there's the single player primary pieces quad relics legends, and that's actually the Derek Jeter to the right, but they look the same. It's just active players versus retired players. 26 cards in the subset, each number to 25 with a gold emerald parallel rainbow. Now for our autographs, such a big part of 2022 Tops Museum. We'll start with the archival autos, 90. I take that back, 89 cards, each number to 299 or less. These are the ones that you're gonna pull most out of boxes. You've got a parallel rainbow of copper, gold, and emerald. Then we have the Altier autograph books, 24 cards in that set, each number to 25 or less. We have the Canvas Collection original player autos, 20 cards in that and they are all numbered one of one. They are not autographed by the artist, but by the player. We have dual autographs. Those are gonna be 21 cards, numbered to 15 or less. And we also have the framed Hall of Fame autos, 41 cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less. Then we have the museum framed autos. These are the case hits, very sought after cards, 65 cards in the subset and they're not parallels, but we have four different versions. The silver frame to 15, the gold frame to 10, the black frame to five, and finally the one of one wood frame. We also have superstar show pieces, and those are gonna have 30 cards in the subset, and they're each numbered to 25 or less. Finally, we have the triple autographs. That's gonna have nine cards in the set, and they're each numbered to five. Now for our autographed relics. We'll start with the autographed Jumbo Lumber Bat Relics, 25 cards in that set, each number to five with the parallel Emerald One of One. The dual autographed Jumbo Lumber Bat Relics, 20 cards numbered to five with an Emerald One of One parallel. We also have the MLB Authenticated Base Autographed Relics, 10 cards in that set, each number to 10 with the parallel Ruby and Emerald Rainbow. You can see what that looks like with the Pete Alonzo on the right. We also have the Momentous Material Dual Jumbo Patch Autos, 30 cards in the set, each number to five with an Emerald One of One parallel. And we have the Momentous Materials Jumbo Patch Autos. That's gonna have 83 cards in the subset, each number to 15 or less with a parallel gold and emerald rainbow as well. We have more autographed relics. We have the museum framed autograph patch, 32 cards in that subset, each number to one of one. You can see what that looks like with the Shohei Otani on the right. We also have the museum framed dual autograph patch books, 11 cards in that set, and they are one of ones as well. We have the single player signature swatches, dual relic autos. You're gonna pull a lot of these out of the boxes, 53 cards in the set, each number to 399 or less. There is a parallel breakdown of copper to 50, gold to 25, and emerald one of one. We have the single player signature swatches, triple relic autos, 34 cards in that subset, each number to 399 or less. You'll see a lot of these coming out of packs as well with the copper, gold, emerald, parallel rainbow. And that is what brings us to our break team targets. A lot of different autos, a lot of different relics. We've got some really nice rookies we can chase. So the question really becomes, who are the teams you should be targeting in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm gonna give you six different teams. We're gonna start with what I think the best team is, and that's the New York Yankees. The Yankees have so much content in this set, it almost doubles every other team. 
They have eight base cards, five inserts, 62 different autos you can get, and 86 different relics. It's insane how much Yankees stuff is in this set. The key autos you're going to be looking for, Aaron Judge, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Don Mattingly, Bernie Williams, Garrett Cole. There's a ton more on the list, but really the Yankees, I believe they're going to be the most expensive spot. If you get them in a random team break, keep them, don't trade them, even if you're chasing some of the three rookies. And we'll get into the three rookies and why I don't believe they're really ones that you want to target in breaks here in a minute. I believe the Yankees in a pick your team will be the most expensive. If you want to pony up and you're a fan, go ahead and do it. Other than that, if you're not a Yankees fan, probably want to target some of the other teams here. But just know, a ton of content and by far the best team that you can get in museum collection. If you're looking for the most autos, well, you would actually look at the New York Yankees. But the team with the second most autos is going to be the Atlanta Braves. They've got three base cards, three inserts, 43 autos, and 42 relics. Also going to be an expensive team and pick your team breaks. Because you've got autos like Ronald Acuna Jr., John Smoltz, Austin Riley, Freddie Freeman, uh, Chipper Jones, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin's in there as well, Dale Murphy's in there. A lot of good autos of current and prior Braves players, and I believe they'll be expensive as well. Probably a team that you want to keep in a random team break. In a pick your team break, you're going to have to pony up some cash for these, but I think you're going to see a pretty good return on investment if you're getting into a case break or something like that. You should hit maybe an auto, maybe even two out of a case. So the Atlanta Braves, a very good team as well. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, that's going to be the Tampa Bay Rays, who are actually tied with the Mariners, who also have three. But... The Rays have a lot more content, so we're going to cover off on them. The Rays have three base cards, three rookie cards, two inserts, 21 different autos, and 24 relics. The key names you're chasing, obviously the big one going to be Wander Franco, but you've also got Shane Baz in there, Randy Orozarena, Tyler Glasnow autos. They've got a few more that you can hit out of there that would carry some value as well. Obviously, because of Wander Franco, another team that will be expensive and pick your team breaks. In a random team break, another team that you don't want to trade because you want to chase that Wander Franco. However, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, keep in mind that even though there's a ton of different autos in here, with Wander Franco kind of being the exception, he's got two different autos in here. But your Julio Rodriguez, your Spencer Torkelson, your Bobby Witt, They've only got one auto, and that's in that archival autos subset that we covered off on earlier. They do not have a ton of different autos in here. You can only pull them out of one subset. So be a little weary about overpaying for some of those teams because the odds are going to be pretty long to pull one of those. And the reality is the Mariners don't have a lot of other content. The Tigers don't. The Royals do not either. Good if you can hit one of those cards, but the odds are going to be long. The Tampa Bay Rays, with Wander Franco having two different autos out of here, I think they're a little bit more safe. They're going to be an expensive team. People seem to be a little bit down on Wander because he's injured right now, but Wander probably has the highest ceiling out of all of the names that we just mentioned. So keep that in mind when you're looking for the Tampa Bay Rays. If you want a solid choice, look at the Angels. They've got four base cards, one rookie card, two inserts, 24 different autos, and 21 relics. And the names from the autos that you can pull are big names in the hobby. We're talking Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Nolan Ryan, Reggie Jackson, Anthony Rendon. You've got Reed Detmers as a rookie auto in there. So if you get the Angels, which will be expensive in a pick-your-team break, probably top five, top six team expense-wise, you're going to have to pony up. But you're chasing those big names, Shohei Itani, Mike Trout, and they have multiple autos throughout the set. If you get them in a random team break, hold them. If for some reason you can make a trade for them, trade any team you got unless it's one of the three teams we've already covered off on. I believe the Angels are probably a top five team in this set just based upon some of the names that you can get out of their auto checklist. And now I'm going to give you a couple sleepers. We'll start with the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies have three base cards, one rookie card, three inserts, 36 autos, and 39 relics. The names you're going to be chasing, legendary third baseman Mike Schmidt, 
Bryce Harper, Zach Wheeler, Steve Carlton, Jim Tomei. They've all got autos in there. So a lot of different Hall of Fame autos, some very nice current player autos in Bryce Harper and Zach Wheeler. And they've got a ton of content, 36 autos, 39 relics. If you're buying into a case break, I believe that the Phillies will probably drop out of the top five most expensive, maybe even the top 10 most expensive. If you can get them at the right price and get in a case break, you're going to get a return based upon how much content that they actually have in here. I believe they're kind of just behind the Atlanta Braves and the Yankees in regards to quantity of content. If you get them in a random team break, or if you don't get them in a random team break, you might be able to trade for the Phillies. And I think trading most of the teams that you might hit in a random team break would be a good idea to go for the Phillies, especially if it's kind of a mid-tier team. Probably a team you might be able to steal with, with some unassuming trade partner. So go ahead and look at the Phillies as our first sleeper. My second sleeper, going to be the Houston Astros. And here's why. The Houston Astros have a ton of relics. They've got like more relics than anyone but the Yankees. And the names we can pull out of there going to be pretty good names. I know the Astros have a little bit of a black eye, but let's just cover off on them. We've got four base, one insert, 23 autos, 51 relics. Some of the names we're looking for out of this set, Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve, Jeff Bagwell, Alex Bregman, and Nolan Ryan. And don't forget, they've got a ton of really cool relics as well. So the Houston Astros have some big names we can get in the auto checklist, and the relic checklist even expands on those names more. And some of them, a lot of different one-of-ones you can get out of there, a lot of those case hits. So the Astros, who I don't believe are going to be that expensive of a team, probably middle tier somewhere, a very good team to get and a great team to trade for in a random team break. And if you can get them for the right price and pick your team, pounce on that all day because they've got plenty of content and some very good names. So those are my six teams. Who are the teams that you're going to be chasing in breaks? Let me know in the comments below. I love responding to most of the comments that are worth responding to. And I would love to know what teams you're chasing. I get the three big rookies that everyone's going to be chasing out of here. My advice is to kind of be weary about overpaying for those. I get chasing it in a case break, but don't overpay. That's my advice. But if you want to know how I break down all 30 of the teams, I've got a break team cheat sheet for you. And what I do is I tell you who the top tier teams are, teams that I think would be good no matter what, our middle tier teams where they're going to be kind of hit and miss, but they've got enough content to give you a fair shot. And then the teams in the bottom tier that I would recommend steering clear from. So for our top tier, we've got a lot of the teams that we just covered off on the Tampa Bay Rays, the Angels, the Yankees, the White Sox. They've got a ton of content in here, 38 different autos, 26 different relics. You've got the Red Sox in here. They've got 32 autos, 42 relics. The Twins, surprisingly, almost a sleeper as well. But with the Twins, you've got 32 autos and 34 relics. Some great names on that auto checklist as well. The Phillies, my sleeper. The Atlanta Braves with a ton of content. And the Houston Astros being my other sleeper. For the second tier, got a lot of teams in here. They're not bad. They're not great. The Dodgers fall into this category. For the Dodgers, we've got 21 autos, but they've got 50 relics, so they've got a ton of relics as well. Just not a lot of big names, like big star, starry names. The Kansas City Royals are in here purely because Bobby Witt is in the set. So you've got the Kansas City Royals, which have not a ton of content, but they do have 16 autos and 19 relics. Seattle's in here because of J-Rod. I would love to put Seattle higher. But keep in mind, J-Rod's only got one auto and everything else. They've only got nine total autos, 11 different relics, but you do get a lot of rookie cards. So Seattle's in here. The A's have a surprisingly good lineup. San Diego's very good in here. The Blue Jays, who have kind of been not a very good team in 2022, they surprisingly have quite a bit of content as well. They've got 16 autos and 28 different relics. So these are the teams that kind of round out my second tier. Don't sleep on the Cardinals in this. The Cardinals could almost be a top tier team, a very good auto checklist there as well. For my bottom tier, kind of the teams that we've been seeing all season. The one that's most disappointing here is the Pirates. 
The Pirates have O'Neill Cruz in the base set, but O'Neill Cruz does not have any autos in this set. The Guardians, an absolutely terrible team in this. They've only got three autos and one relic. You've got the same thing kind of going on with the Rockies, five of autos and eight relics. The Rangers, not very good either. Uh, let's see, the Marlins are probably the worst team here. They've got one auto and one relic in the whole set. So these teams down here, steer clear, they're not that great. And that wraps up the break team cheat sheet. Let me know if you think I've got teams rated too high, too low. Again, love to respond to a lot of the comments that people post on these videos. So that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating. So let me explain what this is. First of all, it's the most in-depth ranking system you're gonna see anywhere on the internet. What I do is I break the set down into 10 different categories and each category is worth one to 10 points. Then what I do is I add up all of the points in total and that's what gives us our final sensational set rating score using the scale that you see below. So we can have a poor set, an average set, a very good set and a sensational set. Then what I do is I compare the 2022 set to the scores that they've got from the last couple seasons. So 2021 museum collection and 2020. And then we wrap it all up comparing Topps Museum collection to all of the other sets that have been released so far this year. So let's dig right into it. Here are our 10 categories. We'll start with the peel. Appeal on this. It's a high-end hit-driven set, very beautiful cards, and very, very sought-after cards. Not for everyone. The budget-minded collector probably isn't going to be able to get into this. The price on these boxes has gone up a lot in the last couple days because of the checklist. But overall, I think the hobby is really kind of being shifted over into these higher-end sets and a lot of people chasing them. So I'm going to give Appeal a 7. For the base set checklist... This is really the first checklist that has a lot of all of the big rookies that have been playing in 2022. You've got Bobby Witt, J-Rod, Spencer Torkelson, Wander, C.J. Abrams, a lot of big names that we are chasing. It's a very complete set. It's missing a few of the rookies that maybe were around earlier in the season, but overall a very strong checklist. I give it an 8.5. For the auto checklist, Huge names. You've got everyone from Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, J-Rod, all the big rookies. So you would think it would have a very high auto checklist. But there's also a lot of filler autos, some lesser known stars or less sought after, maybe not lesser known, but less sought after stars. And the auto checklists are really big. So we do have the chance at monsters, but we also have the chance at some duds. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5. For the inserts, the parallels and variations, well, we only have one insert set, but it's a very nice one in that canvas collection. And we do have the five parallel rainbow, but a lot of those parallels are gonna hold a lot of value, especially this year, if you can pull some of those parallel rookies. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven. For the pack run and production odds, it's a hobby only release. They do not produce this on a mass scale. It does not look like they have really up to the ante from last year so i don't think the production run has increased because really the parallel odds and everything are kind of the same so i'm going to go ahead and give it a seven for card quality a beautiful card probably one of tops's most beautiful cards that they produce every year they don't call it museum collection for nothing i'm going to go ahead and give it a perfect 10. for historical value some of these cards hold a ton of value on the secondary market. Others are kind of duds because people don't really look for museum collection first. But when we talk about those museum framed autos and some of the bigger autos and lower numbered autos out of here, they can hold a premium on the secondary market. Multiple four figure and five figure sales can be seen throughout this set. If you go look at eBay, 130 point card history sales there are tons of valuable cards that get sold out of here but there's also a few duds so i go ahead and give it a 6.5 for the cost value what that is is how much return are we getting on each box or case that we are opening i'm going to give it a three here's why although we can hit some mega bangers out of this set we can also get 
plenty of duds out of this set. It is a high risk, high reward set, and not every box is going to return 100% or 100% plus value. So just know that going in, there's a high risk to this set. If, if you can handle that, it's a great fun set to open. If you're spending your month's rent on this stuff, you might not want to do that because you might not get the return you were expecting and you don't want to be disappointed that way. For artistic value, a very beautiful set, very beautifully designed cards. They have kept it kind of tried and true. They have not really pushed the envelope from the last year's designs, but overall a very beautiful set high gloss cards just very very nice cards i go ahead and give it an eight and finally for collectability this is where we take value and everything out of it how collectible are these cards well i'm going to go ahead and give it a 6.5 some of the rookie cards if you want to add to your pc collection they're beautiful cards and great additions the team set's not going to have a ton of different cards in it, so it's not really representative of your team as a whole if you're a team collector. So maybe you steer clear of this set or maybe buy a couple of the singles. And then I think just simply because of the auto chase and the relic chases that we get out of here, very fun to open these packs and very fun to see what you can pull out of them. So we give it a 6.5. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add up all of those scores and figure out how good 2022 Topps Museum Collection really is. So for 2022, Topps Museum Collection tops out at a 71. So a very good set overall, a very good sensational set rating score. It is a set that isn't for everyone, high-end, hit-driven. If you're a budget collector, probably not one that you're really going to want to chase or get into. But if you're looking for autos, and if you're looking for some of those high-end hits, this is not that expensive of a premium product. So I would recommend to maybe chase some of these. Definitely one where you can be looking for singles on the secondary market. And as a set collector, not really a set that you would maybe collect as a set. But if you do, it's a beautiful one to have. In 2021, Topps Museum Collection topped out at 63. The reason for the bump is because of that checklist that we have with the rookies this year. In 2020, Topps Museum Collection also came in at a 63.5, so it's really kind of improved this year a lot because of that checklist. It is a very strong checklist, and there are a ton of nice autos because of that checklist that we can get into. So, how does 2022 Topps Museum Collection rank with all of the other sets that have come out to date? Well, it comes in second out of 20 sets we're really starting to see the rankings show what sets are good and bubbling up and which ones have kind of fallen out of the top 10. so it's still behind bowman baseball bowman baseball with a comfortable lead at 78 and then we have tops inception which is kind of a, a surprising set to still be in the top three but it's a very good set kind of rounding out the top three along with tops tribute Tops is still dominating the top 10 list, but we do have Panini Select, which Panini still has a lot of product to come out. Immaculate comes out here in a couple weeks, so we'll see where Immaculate lands on the list. But overall, Tops Museum Collection, a fantastic set, ranks very well this year because of that base set checklist and some of the autos we can get out of it. So let me know if you think I've got this rated too high, if you think I've got it rated too low in the comments below. Would love to hear from you on your thoughts. Let me know if you're buying in, steering clear, just buying singles, whatever it is. Comment below, let me know your thoughts on 2022 Topps Museum Collection. And as always guys, as you're out there in the wild, I hope you have fantastic luck finding the packs that you want to open. And when you open them, I hope you pull some fire. And until next time, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.